First up, Kanye West's former assistant, who is currently suing him, has spoken out about the hate she's been receiving. She said, The hate I've been receiving lately has been overwhelming, and I understand that not everyone believes me, or, you know, not everyone likes me, and that's okay. Okay, so typically I ignore stuff like this. Um, but the hate I've been receiving lately has been overwhelming. And I understand that not everyone believes me or, you know, not everyone likes me and that's okay. Like everyone is entitled to their opinion. Um, however, I just, I can't, I, I want to know like what's going through some of your heads when you type things like go kill yourself or I hope your car crashes and sets on fire and you can't get your seatbelt off and you die a slow painful death like what like what's going through your mind when you're typing those things to me I've never had a desire to write anything like that to anyone it's a tough situation and we'll keep you updated as the story develops Next, Charleston White has been released from jail. We don't have all the details yet, but it's definitely a story to watch. You going, I just got out of jail. You said you did what? You had to wait on me? Yeah. Oh, I appreciate y'all waiting on me. You. Yeah, yeah. Show out. I'm yeah. showing out today. I want to put on all my jewelry. I'm hey. looking fresh. Looking fresh. I, my mother's like, that's Charleston. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm ready, baby. Yeah. Yeah, shit, yeah, I had to, man, put on the armor jewelry on, fresh up out of jail. I heard these niggas been talking and celebrating. Yeah, I heard these niggas been talking and celebrating. Like, I got some P. Diddy charges. No, man, no, we come. Say, man, we coming up out the bank with the money. Yeah, yeah, we coming up out the bank with the money, man. Yeah, yeah, we coming up out the bank with the money. Shit, these high ass lawyers is like genies, that nigga say. We coming up out the bank with the money, man. Yeah, 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 we coming up out the bank with the money. That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah, 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 the judge was mad at me. Uh, yeah, come on, come get a picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, they, yeah, then we get the interview money later. Yeah, yeah, we got a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, for going to jail, they want to talk to a nigga. And they asked me what happened. TMZ posted me, Club Shay Shay calling. Uh, bre all that want to know. What, what you do to them animals? Nigga, I ain't done a motherfucking thing to no animal. Yeah, yeah, let me see. We just leaving the bank with all this here, man. Yeah, yeah, we just leaving the bank with all this here. <laughs> P. Diddy, the only nigga in jail with money that can't get out of jail. Yeah, boy, these high ass lawyers is like genius. That young nigga say, these high ass lawyers is like genius. Oh, I heard them niggas been clapping and cheering and cuckooing and cockeying. <laughs> say, I heard them niggas been cheering and thought a nigga was gone, fella. They thought I had P. Diddy charted. I wasn't gonna never come home. Fuck it wrong with y'all boys, nigga. Nigga. Stay tuned for more updates on this developing situation. Safari took to YouTube to address the deadbeat allegations made by Erica Mena. He expressed regret over having kids with Erica due to her anger issues and included video clips to support his claims. This deadbeat narrative is just so jarring to me. When it comes to being a, a father in a co-parenting situation where Somebody wants to have full control of every single thing and they can't have control. It, it's just not going to be a, a easy transition. I, I have to put myself first because I'm either going to end up in jail or worse because I'm dealing with someone who is just whose anger management is just non-existent. When, when you have children with somebody who, at the end of the day, it, it shouldn't even have happened because I should have just noticed certain parenting. You know, when you, you're with someone for three years and they have a child and you probably saw the child three to four times because the child was put off to go live with somebody else. You know, you don't, you kind of look past it when you don't have kids or you're not thinking about that. I never even like was like, yo, 
why doesn't your son live here? And then when you finally get to have a conversation with the son and find out why, it's it's crazy. You know, imagine speaking to a child who's of age and knows what's going on. He's 16 years old. And he says, I would kill myself. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't make that up. I kind of just looked past certain things and thought that, you know, maybe I could help him make things better. But when you aren't with somebody and it doesn't work out and the two of you are just like in a weird space and everything is a fight, especially in front of the kids, like I'm not gonna subject myself to that. My kids have never ever seen me upset. My kids have never heard me yell. just not in me. My original standing order for this child support and the visitation and all of that, everything, it originated from Georgia. We moved to Florida. When we moved to Florida, everything has to get transferred over. It just got transferred over like this week. So now I get to find out what this new setup is going to be because I refuse to go to her house to pick up the kids. I refuse. I'm not. She... It's just too unstable, too unpredictable, and the only way I would do it is either a police precinct or if the kids are somewhere else and I'm picking them up from there. But everything is just done off of spite and being malicious intent on the other end. Me, I don't move like that. I don't live like that. When I was filming Love & Hip Hop Miami and I had my kids here calling, who? Oh, where, where, where the kids at? What they do? Oh, you better not be filming with the kids. Oh. First of all, I've, I've never filmed with the kids ever by myself on Love & Hip Hop. They're not a part of my storyline. That doesn't make sense to me. They're not, I'm not going to be in the park pushing the kids, playing, oh, yeah. Oh. Like, of course, they wanted to see me film with them, but, you know, both parents have to sign off on that. Maji's room, ain't no, ain't no deadbeat doing this. Deadbeats ain't doing this. My, daughter, my daughter's room is bigger than, than some adults' rooms. And it's just so insane to me how people just, oh yeah, you're a deadbeat. Yo, I know. It's a messy situation, and we'll see how it unfolds. During Fortune's Most Powerful Women event, Lizzo was asked about the recent allegations against her. If you recall, she was accused of creating a hostile work environment through sexual harassment and religious and racial discrimination. I had a difficult year last year. You had um, some allegations against you of sexual harassment and creating a hostile work environment, all of which you have denied, and I want to be completely clear about that. How did you feel when that news came to light? You know, I don't want to talk about things like that. This isn't the space where we're celebrating female CEOs and powerful women. This isn't really the space to talk about the negative things that happened to us, because so much negative stuff happens to powerful women, and this is not the It does, I did, and I think that's, that's one of the reasons why we have to ask the question to give the powerful woman the opportunity to answer in her own words, rather than just let stories circulate right. online. Right, as I agree with you, I don't think this is the platform for that. Okay, okay. <laughs> about protecting your peace as one of the reasons for your gap year. Does that ever impact what you say and what you post on social media? Baby, I've been canceled for everything at this point. <laughs> Only God can cancel me now. <laughs> I think that um, I talk about the things that are important to me and I talk about the things that I can bring a difference to. Mm -hmm. And I think that those are my boundaries now with the public. Lizzo's response 
was measured and will keep an eye on any further developments. In heartbreaking news, former One Direction singer Liam Payne has died after a fall from his hotel balcony in Argentina. Witnesses say he fell from the third floor of the Casa Sur Palermo Hotel. Police are investigating whether it was intentional or accidental. Liam was only 16 when he joined One Direction, and he was a key songwriter for the band. Our thoughts are with his family and friends during this difficult time. King Harris was arrested in Delinwood, Georgia, after nearly striking a police vehicle while pulling out of a gas station. Reports claim the police found marijuana and a gun on him, and he had an outstanding warrant for a failure to appear. Harris was taken to the DeKalb County Jail, and two men with him were charged with possession of marijuana.